Hey, good afternoon, everyone. How's everybody? Hello, can you guys hear me? Good afternoon. Yeah, hi, good afternoon. Uh, I'm glad that's a confirmation that you guys can hear me. Because, you know, as I said before, uh, my, you know, the settings, you know, uh, change frequently. So, you know, uh, always make sure that my microphone volume is good and the, uh, okay, so that my speaker volume is good and the uh, input micro vo microphone volume is good. But sometimes these things change without uh, my knowledge, without me knowing. Just, um, okay. All right. So, uh, t uh, I guess since today is Wednesday, tomorrow, Thursday, the last day of this week, and then, um, I think we can wrap up time value of money today, uh, hopefully. Um, uh, and just to uh, uh, bring you up to speed or just to jostle your memory, uh, we did, you know, uh, future value of annuities yesterday, right? And then our question was, okay, um, our first example was, you know, a, a graduate school fund. Right, and there were there were three scenarios, uh, four scenarios, four possible scenarios, right, to achieve your uh, goal or target uh, future value of 60k. Um, but you know, uh, uh, none of the uh, one scenario is you know uh, uh, making $800 deposit every month at the end of the month for 60 months, right, uh, at 6% uh, APR. Then you arrive at, uh, uh, this is the future value you're going to arrive at. Now, that still falls, you know, like $4,000 short uh, of our target. And then um, if you increase the uh, uh, monthly deposit to 860, then, oh, well, that's the closest thing. But, you know, we first tried out 850. With 850, we're still falling short. So we, you know, um, tried out 860, uh, $10 more, and we overshoot it by $2. So we are very close. That means, you know, the actual, uh, the precise monthly uh, deposit uh, that will hit 60K exactly uh, is somewhere below, slightly below 860, 859 something must be, must be. Um, that's possible. Uh, Another uh, option was, right, uh, put it in a bank that pays higher rate, which is, you know, not really uh, realistic. Um, uh, otherwise, you know, you extend the, you postpone it by one year. You extend your timeline by one year. Um, excuse me a second. <clears throat> so uh, the question, my next question was, you know, um, then uh, what if we, um, is there a way we can nail the exact payment? And I said, yes, yes, of course. Uh, without, you know, without you know, doing the trial and error, right? I told you, you know, uh, trying out, oh, 860, 850, 855, you know, uh, uh, 859, uh, all these things are trial and error, right? So without uh, trial and error, um, we can use, uh, we can solve for N, exactly. We can solve for N. Let's see, uh, I think I had, yeah, this thing open. Uh, Remember, in, in a single cash flow model, we solved uh, the base formula, right, for every, eh, for every possible unknowns, right, right, we solved it for uh, P 
he solve it for p if p is the unknown solve it for or solve it for n just like that we can uh, in uh, future value of annuity which is in our uh, payment times one plus r raised to n minus one over r we can solve uh, we should be able to solve for this payment if that is the unknown and we should also be able to solve for r if that's the unknown we should be able to solve for n if that's the unknown but if um again and, uh, our question was what is the payment what can we nail the exact payment yes and to solve for it the formula is already presenting itself the formula is already presenting itself in z equals x times y format isn't it right so nicely presenting itself already in uh, uh, that's exactly you know uh, z equals x times y format and x is what we want to know so then oh solving for payment not a big deal uh, FVA divided by the thing in the bracket but you know we all know dividing by something dividing dividing by something is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal isn't it right a reciprocal uh, you know x negative uh, x raised to negative 1 is 1 over x right so we can express it this way F, FVA times the reciprocal of the thing in the bracket right I don't you know and then uh, so if I rewrite that it's gonna be FVA times r over 1 plus r raised to n minus 1. Okay, so everyone uh, got this formula, right? Um, of course, you know, how did we arrive at formula? I, I mean, before, before that, how uh, did we arrive at this formula? Uh, that I will need to explain later. Uh, uh, the steps of derivation now so if you if you want you can take the screenshot right now because I'm gonna have to uh, uh, delete it uh, so, but you know uh, if you have memorized or if you have already taken the screenshot now it's time to actually you know do the uh, example so here let's go back to uh, this example this is exactly our example right uh, your target future value of annuity. Professor, can you put it back? Yeah, 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 yeah sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, hold, hold, hold on, hold on. All righty. Take a screenshot. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Uh, where was I? Uh, all right. So, um, uh, we know uh, whatever this comes out, it should be something like, you know, 860, something close to 860. But, you know, before we do that, uh, uh, we'll, need to, uh, uh, we'll need to prepare the uh, periodic rate and the uh, end periods, right? Of course, the periodic rate will be 0.5% because it's APR uh, uh, divided by uh, M. Okay, and then, okay, uh, n is t times n. Okay, there you go. Now it's time to uh, enter that formula. The formula is FVA times uh, open parenthesis. You don't, uh, later you will see you don't really need to open parenthesis at this point, but you know, uh, 
Uh, okay, so let's not open parentheses now. R over, now open parentheses in, for the entire denominator. Open another one. Uh, 1 plus R raised to N minus 1 and close parentheses. Right? And hit enter. There you go. I told you it should be something close to 860 because when we tried out 860, we overshot it by $2. So it won't be too different from 860, but slightly lower than 860. This is exactly slightly lower than 860 by three cents, right? 859.97. Uh, so we nailed the exact monthly deposit or monthly, uh, I've been telling you, deposit is the same thing as payment. Um, so this way we can nail it. Um, next question, then you know, uh, it looks like the next question is, you know, how do we solve for uh, what should? How do we solve for R, the rate? What should be the rate? I mean, we know the payment, right? Uh, we know the future value. Uh, so what should be the uh, rate? Um, and then the next example is, uh, how do we solve for n, right? How do we solve for n? Uh, so here, um, for the rate in annuity, for the rate in annuity, uh, there is no uh, unique, there is no unique uh, process or unique formula to find the rate. It's actually you have to use iterative process. In other words, trial and error, right? Now, of course, the computers can do it easily. Uh, so in other words, uh, the calculations that will, if you have to try, if you have to try out uh, 10 different, 10 possible numbers for that, it will take, you know, uh, uh, probably at least uh, 10 minutes to try out. Uh, but you know, uh, the computer can run that simulation, right? The computer <laughs> can run the simulation. It can try out like, you know, million different numbers uh, 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 in a split second, maybe not million, but at least thousand different possible candidates in a split second. So uh, for that, uh, we will need to use Excel's built-in function. But here, uh, we cannot get to this directly. We will have to uh, first find the periodic rate. Why? Because it's monthly. It's monthly. You cannot get, you know, whatever you solve for will be month. So uh, first, we will need to uh, uh, find n. And we know n is uh, t times m. Uh, and that was already done there, so I'm going to drag it down. Okay, 60. And then uh, we're going to use Excel's uh, rate function, right? Rate. So it says uh, n period. Okay. Enter and then comma and then payment, comma. And I'm going to make this negative. You have to understand, I keep telling this. Uh, you need to factor in, or you need to take into consideration that uh, this is basically a financial calculator. And in a financial calculator, there is always, you know, a distinction between cash inflow and cash outflow, right? And for all, you know, for all uh, uh, practical uh, reasons, right? Uh, the deposit that you're making is cash outflow because you put it into the uh, uh, your bank account every month at the end of every month. So that's cash outflow. And in the end, there's one big lump sum cash inflow of 60k. So uh, there you go. And then present value. There is no present value. There is no present value needed because this is not a, a single cash flow model. You don't. Uh, there's no. But we're, and on the other end, in the single cash flow model, there was no payment, right? So uh, 
uh, you skip it, but you know you have to always you know uh, put the comma because it's a placeholder it, for that variable. You have to uh, put comma to let uh, Excel know, let the computer know that uh, uh, that placeholder is blank, right? And then future value, and that's it. I mean, after that, type. Oh, type. Type means uh, ordinary annuity or annuity due. Okay, so only two types: ordinary annuity. How do you enter ordinary annuity? Nothing. You don't enter anything. Ordinary is the default. So either you enter zero or nothing. Okay, if it is annuity due, you enter one. Now think about it. Why? Why do you enter one? Then I tell you the, the only difference between the ordinary annuity, mathematically, I mean, I'm not talking about, you know, oh, uh, annuity due starts from the beginning of the period and uh, ordinary annuity, and the, not that. The, what is the mathematical difference between the two? The mathematical difference is just one more compounding, one more compounding, right? So if it is, you know, um, uh, annuity due, you enter one. If it is ordinary an annuity, enter nothing or zero. Uh, but you'll still have to uh, put, you know, uh, a comma to let it know. A guess you don't need. Uh, we are doing this because we don't want to guess, right? I'll just close the parentheses, hit enter. See? It comes out as 0 0.5, which is exactly the, the monthly rate or the periodic rate. Okay? Okay. Um, a second. <laughs> okay, uh, I had to kill off the uh, AC because it was, you know, getting a little uh, cold. So once we know, uh, yeah, it's monthly, then the, if the question was asking, and more, all the questions, if it, if it is a question about rate, rate is always annual, right? By default, rate is always annual. So you answer it as annual. If it is monthly uh, 0 0.5, you multiply it by M, and voila, you, got six, you get 6%. Hmm? So did everyone get it? Everyone? Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. How about the uh, the rest of the uh, class? Hmm? How about the uh, rest of the uh, class? Did you guys all get it? Yeah. Hmm? Okay. Good. At least two people got it. <laughs> At least two people got it. Okay. Um, Speak of volume in this, something like, okay. So it looks like 75%. All righty, then uh, uh, what is this one? Uh, that's finding N. So to find N, to find N, uh, what do we, uh, what is the formula? The formula for finding N, I put it somewhere here. Uh, I, no, I, it's on the, uh, it's on there. Uh, on your file, if you have Excel file, it, uh, if you open this file, you will be able to see it. But you know, not on mine. You know, this is. But you know, uh, instead, then I will uh, open. Let me open. Okay. Okay, so um, here's the formula for N uh, in future value of annuity. Um, you may, you know, once again, I hope you wouldn't uh, say, wow, that's so comp you know, complicated. Uh, no, well, these are steps of derivation, right? 
Uh, and of course, we need to use natural law. There's only, you know, uh, no other way. Uh, using, you know, uh, law is the uh, only way you can uh, turn a uh, power function into a multiplicative function. So uh, then we, this is the, uh, and what's the other? That's the present value of annuity case. So, we're, you know, uh, we're going to come back to that later. Okay. So then we're going to enter this formula, right? Uh, of course, um, this one needs to be filled in because, you know, uh, that's, we know it's 6% uh, divided by M. And then we enter um, uh, natural log of, uh, okay, uh, uh, FVA over payment times R plus one, close parenthesis, divided by natural log of one plus R. Let me make sure that this is the correct formula because I don't memorize it. As I said, you know, I always, if I need to, yeah, the correct one. Uh, So it already gave me 60, right? Of course. It has to be, you know, there are 60, you know, um, it has to be 60 months, right? Because five years, uh, original scenario, uh, five, it will take five years, you know? Your timeline is five years, so 60 months. So then uh, if the uh, question was asking uh, uh, to answer in years, you just divide it by, M. And that will give you exactly um, five years. Okay, so uh, you can try out. You can try out uh, uh, this example. I'm not gonna do this one, but you can try it out. It's like it looks like you know quarterly quarterly compounding, and six years timeline six years, and your target future value also you know uh, 60k. APR 7.5. What should be the uh, uh, quarterly deposit, right? What should be the uh, rate? We know the rate. Uh, and then, you know, uh, but, you know, uh, check it out, you know, verified by the formula, right? And time, you know, six years. Will it give six years? It should. So uh, if there is, you know, a, a future value of annuity, and there's also present value of annuity. Now, what would be the uh, uh, example? Uh, so, uh, well, the uh, graphical uh, illustration is like this. Now, of course, annuities are all in future. Annuities are all in the future. But, you know, uh, in future value, we want to know what it is at this point, at you know, uh, maturity, right? But present value of annuity is, we want to know what is the present value. In other words, at time zero, right? So the, in future, it was compounding present uh, in the present value of annuities is discounting, right? So what would be the uh, situation, what would be the situations where present value of annuities uh, is the case? So, uh, 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 two examples. Let's, you know, I think about two examples. One, let's say you won a lottery. The jackpot is $10 million. I, uh, <coughs> that was, I guess, about a week ago, I think, uh, uh, Mega Million was like a 1.28 billion, billion in the order of billion. I mean, the largest jackpot in the history so far, what I, you know, before 1.28 billion was like 500 million or 600 million. That was huge already. But, you know, um, ah, this time, uh, but uh, I was completely unaware. Had I known, I would have bought. But even if I had bought it, you know, uh, the result is already out. 
uh, someone in uh, someone from Illinois, I guess, someone from Illinois, uh, single-handedly, just one single person, one single ticket. Hit the jackpot. Uh, so anyway, uh, so that was my $10 uh, unwasted because if I bought it, my $10 just went to the fund, right? <laughs> to uh, uh, that uh, benefit, you know, that uh, single winner uh, of jackpot. Anyway, if you win the lottery, right, you have two payout options, right? Usually you have two payout options. Um, one option is you know, a lump sum cash payout. The other one is annuity. Now, usually if you choose a lump sum cash payout, then uh, you get taxed at the uh, uh, top tax rate. Top tax rate is like 39%. Uh, that's almost 40%. So you get about 6 million after tax, right? After taxes. Uh, but if you choose annuity, uh, you will, let's say, I mean, this is just, you know, uh, my own example. So it's, you know, in reality, it may be different. Um, uh, let's say you get $20,000 every month for the next 30 years. So monthly twenty thousand. I'm, you know, I don't complain. Monthly twenty thousand for uh, the next thirty years. That's three hundred and sixty months. Three hundred and sixty payments of twenty uh, k, right? So some people might say, oh, then you know, I will go for the uh, annuity because why? Because you know, that's total of seven point two million. Total of 7.2 million, so it's better than 6 million. No, that that's uh, uh, this person is flawed. First of all, why? Uh, because this, what he did was he simply you know multiplied uh, 20k by 360, right? But then think about it. This 20k doesn't exist in a single point in time. I mean, if it exists in a single at a, in a single point in time, then you can simply multiply. But, you know, it is spread over 360 months, right? So you cannot uh, directly compare it like that. We all know, I mean, uh, you know, um, there's no way you can directly compare because it's apples and oranges, right? So that's why we uh, need to uh, know how to calculate present value of annuities because those are annuities, right? Those are annuities. Um, so um, then the question is, you know, uh, 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 which one, which one, uh, uh, which one, uh, which option do you choose? Do you pick uh, lump sum cash payout or annuities? And when I ask this question, most of the students say uh, lump sum. And if I ask why, oh. <laughs> Their answer is very uh, morbid, you know, based on a very morbid assumption. Why? Because they, they all say, I want to enjoy my cash I don't, uh, before I die. I don't know if I'm going to be around for the next 30 years. That answer is very, once again, why so gloomy about <laughs> um, Of course, if you're going to die within the next 30 years, I mean, before the next 30, you know, uh, next 30 years, then, you should take the lump sum. I mean, if you live, if, uh, but who, unless, unless you're leading a very reckless lifestyle, if you're leading a very reckless lifestyle, then yeah, take the cash. But, you know, most people live, uh, uh, most people will live up to the average life expectancy. Isn't that right? Most people will live up to average life expectancy. Why? Because, you know, average life expect expectancy is based on the uh, uh, statistics, you know. Uh, um, and that's based on, so, uh, uh, that's based on the uh, uh, every, uh, 
uh, normal factors like, you know, uh, uh, you're not leading a reckless lifestyle. Uh, you're not in a, a very, you know, um, uh, uh, you're not engaged in or you're not, you know, you're in a profession that is very, you know, that has very um, high uh, risk, like risk of dying in, uh, in line of duty. Uh, unless, of course, police officers, firefighters, or if you're in uh, military duty or military, active military duty, and you are sent to, uh, uh, you know, um, the war zones, of course, then, you know, uh, uh, that would be part of, you know, that would be described as, you know, uh, your risk factor is much higher. But how many of us are like that? You know, of course, if you, I'm not saying... Um, but if you are just, you know, an average person with, you know, average uh, job and average lifestyle, uh, and if you are eating healthy and take care of yourself, exercising, most likely you will live up to uh, the average life uh, expectancy. And the average life expectancy is something like 80-something these days. So assuming that you are uh, you're an average person with average, you know, lifestyle. Then you know uh, you really need to uh, choose between the lump sum and the uh, annuity. And what is the uh, that what is the uh, decision criteria? The decision criteria is, of course, uh, you can since you cannot compare apples with oranges, you will have to turn oranges into apple. I mean, if apple is the present value. And orange is the uh, annuities, and the annuities are all in the future. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So if you <coughs> find the uh, present value of all those annuities, <coughs> Excuse me. if you find the present value of all those annuities, that's like apples, turning oranges into apples. <coughs> so... Then our question is, so you found the uh, present value of all those annuities. Then our next question is, compare it with the uh, lump sum cash payout, which is lump sum cash payout is already in present value. Isn't that right? Because if, you're, <clears throat> if you choose lump sum, you get it today. So it's you know, already in present value, right? It's already in present value. <clears throat> Excuse me. So our question is, which one is greater? They are both present values. Whichever is greater wins out, right? So let's find the present value of annuities. And <clears throat> as, you know, um, as the graphic representation, right? <clears throat> this is a present value of ordinary annuities. Suppose you are... Uh, receiving five thousand dollars <throat> at the end of each year for the next five years, right? <clears throat> I'm joking. And so all you need to do is, you know, um, uh, discount them, right? The first 5,000 will be discounted once, second 5,000 discounted twice, and so on. The last 5,000 discounted five times. And then you sum all of them. That's the present value of all these $5,000 annuities, right? That's ordinary annuity. Annuity do, it starts already, you know, at the beginning. If it is annuity do, the first <clears throat> the first payment doesn't get discounted at all because it's discounted uh, zero times, 1.05 raised to zero. So that will be still, you know, uh, just uh, the payment, 1,000. Uh, the second one gets discounted once, third one uh, twice. So the last one, the fifth one, gets discounted four times. 
right? You see? So the difference between, now you can say, oh, the, so then the difference between the uh, ordinary annuity and the annuity due is then now, oh, <clears throat> one less discounting, one less discounting, isn't that right? Uh, annuity due has one less discounting than ordinary uh, annuities. But then, a uh, one less discounting is the same thing as one more compounding. One less discounting is the same thing as, as one more compounding. So it's still one more compounding. <clears throat> Why? Think about it. <clears throat> oh, that was a very <laughs> bad, you know, serious um, choke. Um, now, um, think about it. If we have payment over 1 plus r raised uh, uh, squared, <clears throat> compounding one more time, that's compounding one more time, then uh, it cancels, so it, it is reduced to 1, right? You understand? <clears throat> um, it's x, 1 over x squared times x, right? 1 over x squared times x. This will be just 1 over x, right? Or you know, x to the negative 2 times x. <clears throat> we know the rule of uh, x to the negative 2 plus 1. And then it will be x to the negative 1, which is 1 over x. <clears throat> So doing one more compounding is exactly the same thing as one less compounding, uh, one less discounting, one less discounting, right? Make sense? So uh, that same rule still holds. Remember, in the future value of annuity, I told you the difference between the uh, annuity, ordinary annuity and annuity due is one more compounding. Even in the uh, present value of annuities, still, <coughs> uh, it's one less compounding, well, one less discounting, or one more compounding. Still the same thing. Okay. Now, then, um, again, the idea is, you know, we understand the idea. Okay. Um, so I'm going to... So then, uh, present value of annuity is like... Oh, I'm uh, discounting payment by... 1 plus r. This <clears throat> interest rate is called discount rate because you are using that interest rate to discount, right? Well, so in discounting, interest rate is called discount rate. <clears throat> but if it is compounding, it's, it's, co it's interest rate. You don't call it discount rate, but you know, um, um, in some, you know, uh, 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 textbooks, you know, they call, continue to call it a uh, discount rate. Then that's, you know, uh, uh, that's clearly not correct, right? Because it's clearly out of the context. I mean, the co it doesn't fit the context. You are trying to find the future value <clears throat> by compounding, then it should be called interest rate, not discount rate, <clears throat> because you're not discounting. Anyway, um, The first deposit will be discounted once, second deposit discounted twice, and so on. And we know uh, we keep going, and then until uh, the second from the last deposit, <coughs> second from the last deposit will get discounted n minus one time. And the last deposit will get discounted n times. Okay. <clears throat> Again, it's um, you cannot do it for every. You know, we have thirty years, thirty year timeline. Uh, so there are three hundred sixty terms, and you cannot do it for all three hundred sixty terms. That's that's ridiculous. You can't do it. So. Uh, compact way of expressing that is <clears throat> we know how to use the uh, uh, summation sign. We do it by 
a payment over uh, 1 plus r raised to n, where n runs from 1 through t, uppercase t, the terminal t, that's the uh, the maturity or the end of you know our timeline. Again, <clears throat> the problem is, I mean, this is a, 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 a nice way of uh, uh, illustrating the idea. It's a nice way of... Uh, uh, illustrating the idea in a very compact way. Uh, but then the problem is then this doesn't lend itself to actual calculation. Because to do actual calculation, you follow this, you're going back to all of this. So we need a reduced form. And what's the reduced form? The reduced form is, so I'm going to, um, I'm going to have to erase. So the reduced form is like this. <clears throat> payment over R minus payment over R times 1 plus R raised to N. Okay. Now, some of you may have no, some of you may already have noticed that that looks not, that doesn't look like the simplest form. Yes, you're right. It's not the simplest form because it can be simplified further. Why? Uh, how? <clears throat> you can factor out the common factor. We have common factors like, you know, uh, uh, right? That's the common factor. So you can factor out the common factor and make it really, you know, compact. Uh, but that's okay. There's a reason. I mean, um, there are several variants variants of uh, this formula, but it's only ex uh, <clears throat> superficial, superficial variation. It's actually the same thing. So all just, you know, uh, 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 tweaking of the same formula. Uh, but this, this format, this version of the formula is the most uh, uh, most conventionally used one, and there's a good reason for that, because this separates the effect of R and effect of N. This way you can, you know, uh, really see the uh, separate, uh, separate uh, uh, impact of change in R and change in N uh, that they bring, uh, 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 you know, uh, separately, right? Uh, to the PVA. So uh, that's fine. So we're going to, uh, that's why we uh, are going to use this. Okay. This is the formula for present value of annuity. <clears throat> so we can, you know, solve that, uh, solve that, you know, problem, uh, which was what? Um, annuity, uh, which was the lottery, lottery, right? Uh, and is annuity better or uh, uh, lump sum better, and a lot of uh, a lot of you know. Um, see, think about it. It depends on R. A lot of times it depends on R, right? Think about it because R is in the denominator. If R goes up, the whole you know the whole fraction will have to go down. Isn't that right? Whatever whatever makes the denominator go up will bring the whole fraction down. So that means if the interest rate is high, uh, most likely uh, the present value of annuities won't be that much, then you know you go for the lump sum. But if the interest rate is low, <coughs> um, if the interest rate is low, um, uh, the whole fraction will be greater. Uh, whatever makes the denominator smaller, will make the whole fraction go up. So if, then, you know, uh, most likely your uh, present value of annuities will come out greater than just, you know, lump sum. Uh, then you go for the, and also, you know, it also depends on, you know, uh, N, right? N goes up, N goes down. <clears throat> so, 
So we can we can do that problem. But before we do that problem, uh, the second example, let's think about the second example. And the second example was, is, so it can be used also in, um, so you are um, considering to buy a car. The price of the car is 30K and uh, you're gonna finance it for five years, right? What does that mean? You borrow money, right? And uh, pay for the car with the, uh, so that's loan, right? But that's what you do most of the times, you know, uh, buying a house, you get a loan. You gotta, you gotta get a mortgage loan. Uh, buying a car, uh, you finance it. You gotta get a, an auto loan. But of course, <clears throat> uh, there is always you know, down payment. You have to make the down payment uh, because the down payment means that's your, uh, that represents your ownership, right? Even if, uh, think about it. If you borrow 100%, if you borrow 100% from the bank to pay for this $30,000 car, then who should that ownership belong to? The bank. Yeah, to the bank. Then there is no reason the bank will lend the money to you to own the car. Of course, even if you... Uh, so there should be at least uh, even, you know, uh, even in token amount, even in symbolic uh, token amount, there should be your own stake in it. Right? That's down payment. Usually the down payment is like 20% or 25% I mean, conventionally, but it doesn't have to be these days. Even if you, you can, they are all out there to uh, uh, sell their cars. So even, you know, 10% down, yeah, they take it. Even, you know, 5% uh, uh, down, they, they take it. But, you know, um, then think about it. In this example, you made, you know, 20% down payment which is $6,000, right? Then uh, you can you can claim that, you know, your ownership on the car, of course, the title of the car is not with you until, title of the car is not with you until you pay it off. The title of the car is with the bank until you pay it off. But you have all the rights to uh, uh, use the car. Uh, you, you, you bought the car, uh, although it was, you know, uh, yeah, you bought the car because you, know, uh, you paid for it, but, you know, with the borrowed money, right? <clears throat> and you can do uh, everything, anything with it. I mean, it's it's under your name. Uh, uh, but if you, because, you know, at least 20% of that, you know, uh, uh, value, is yours 20% that you know uh, that much you footed the bill right for 20% right you foot the bill for 20% um, that's why it's called equity right that's that's the equity you now we understand uh, uh, what equity is um, then the other 80% um, is the debt right and this car is your asset. Uh, the capital structure of your asset is 80% debt, 20% equity, right? Of course, this car, unless this is owned by a business, it's not uh, a, 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 an asset uh, because asset must contribute. Asset. What is one big? Uh, uh, what is one big element uh, or defining defining a factor of asset? One defining fact, one big defining factor of that. Has to be income producing. Yes, you're right. I mean, uh, DeAndre, right? DeAndre, um, uh, you got 1.5 because uh, uh, 1.5 a while ago you, uh, you answered one question, right? And then, yeah, one big factor. It should generate income, right? It must have income generating power. Now, if it is owned by a company, it will contribute to generating the uh, income for the company in one way or the other. But if it is your personal vehicle, uh, it doesn't contribute to uh, generating income. It, uh, 
because you don't use it for business. Uh, but so, so some people may ask, I use it for my business. Uh, you know, how? Uh, well, I'm self-employed. If you're self-employed, yes, your car is your business asset. You're using it for your business. I mean, you uh, probably you know, use it for uh, transporting you know, uh, uh, your merchandise or you, know, you use it to... Uh, 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 you use it to uh, uh, shuffle around your important client or, you know, whatever. It, it serves to, uh, 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 serves to uh, uh, your business, uh, your business's operating activity. But if it is your purely personal car, it's, it's not classified as an asset. Um, of course, you know, not in the business sense. Uh, uh, you can still, <laughs> it doesn't simply, it just doesn't simply generate income, but you know, uh, 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 oh yeah, you can say, you know, oh, I, you know, I drive for Uber, you know, yeah, maybe, you know, but then if you drive for Uber, you are also a self-employed as well. You're not an Uber employee, you're like a partner, they treat you like a partner. Um, but, you know, uh, actually, you know, Legally, you are like a partner, but uh, you are treated, in effect, like an employee. Uh, a lot of, you know, uh, uh, there was a lot of, you know, uh, 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 controversy about the trucking industry because the truckers are treated like, uh, legally, they are partners, but they are not really, you know, uh, uh, in other words, all the expenses, the, the, the company, all the uh, passes, passes over or uh, transfers the all the expenses to the uh, 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 the truck owners, to the truckers. But you know uh, they are not bearing any cost. But you know um, uh, uh, they are uh, you know taking part in the uh, profit sharing. Um, and I also heard you know uh, uh, FedEx. Drivers are not employees, whereas UPS drivers are employees. FedEx drivers are not employees. Uh, so FedEx drivers uh, are, you know, uh, legally, you know, uh, considered as partners. So then there's a lot of, you know, this, you have to take care of your own medical, uh, you know, uh, insurance and all these things. The company simply is free from all those, you know, obligations. But you know, uh, uh, but they take uh, a, a share of the uh, uh, income generated by you know uh, uh, the drivers. Uh, I think Uber and Lyft, you know, all the same thing. But anyway, um, the point is, um, um, So you, uh, when you buy the car uh, through financing, right? And then uh, you think you have to uh, uh, f arrange a lender, a bank, before you go to the uh, dealership. No, you just go to the car dealership. Dealerships are already, you know, uh, uh, connected with the uh, uh, lenders. And the lenders are generally, you know, uh, automakers themselves. Why? The automakers have their own bank, own financing arm. So uh, that way they can, you know, uh, lend. Um, they also earn interest, right, by lending to the uh, uh, their buyers. They earn interest as well, right, rather than, you know, letting it go to, of course, sometimes, you know, uh, so uh, not all the time you get financed by the uh, uh, the automakers. Sometimes you can uh, use Bank of America for financing your car, but, you know, uh, but when you walk into the uh, dealership, they all have their own. If you go to, uh, like, General Motors, uh, General Motors have their own uh, bank called GMAC. I think, I don't know if, if it is still called GMAC. Uh, and then, you know, uh, 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 
if you go to Chrysler, you know, they have Chrysler Financial Services, you know. If you go to Hyundai dealership, they have Hyundai uh, Financial. If you go to Kia, they have Kia Financial. Uh, but they are all banks that specialize in auto loans. So even without uh, looking for a, a lender, they automatically uh, hook you up with some, uh, you know, at the dealership, you know, automatically, you know, financed by. Uh, so anyway, the point is, uh, so it's a $30,000 car, so, and you put down $6,000, which is 20%, so 24K, $24,000 is the uh, amount financed or the borrowed amount, right? Amount borrowed, right? And then... Uh, Next question is, uh, so this this is going to be paid over the next five years. Usually, you know, uh, when you finance is five years, rarely six years, you know, but, you know, usually five years. Monthly payment. Um, so then, you know, uh, at the dealership, they told you your monthly payment is $500. Then you uh, do the, you know, uh, you run a quick back of the envelope calculation. And you think, oh, it's, if, it is 50K, uh, if it is $500 a month for 60 months, and you do, you know, just even by, you know, uh, mental, mental math, mental calculation, uh, uh, 500 times 60, that comes to 30K. Then you might think, oh, okay, so then, uh, uh, I'm back to a 30k. So 6k must be, uh, well then you know 6k must be uh, my uh, interest paid over five years. But still, uh, you scratch your head. Is that? I mean, all my you know down payment that is you know um, uh, cancelled out by the uh, interest. My down payment is simply. Um, if you think. 6K is the interest for five years, and if it is reasonable, then just simply uh, think about it. It's 24K that you own, and your interest rate is 6% a year. And even uh, annually, um, do the calculation, 6% times you know, uh, 0.06. What do you get? Um, where's the... Uh, 1.44. Yeah, 1.44. 4. K, right? Annually, right? Then for five years, times five, it will be... It looks like it's going to be uh, slightly more than uh, six six k. So you might say, "Oh, good! I'm saving on my interest." No, this is really, really. Ah, what did I do? <laughs> if you say, "Hooray!" You know, uh, I'm. Uh, oh, the the you know uh, the car maker or the uh, the dealership must be stupid. You know, I'm uh, I'm paying actually less interest than. No, but you know this is. And if you think that way. Um, this is because, you know, uh, uh, you think of it in all elementary school level math. You think of it in all elementary school level math. Why? Um, and I've seen a lot of people. I mean, I, I went to, I bought my car, you know, so I, you know, in the car dealership, <clears throat> they cannot, they cannot trick me because I know exactly what, what's going on and, you know, uh, how to calculate the uh, monthly payment. Um, but, you know, I saw people that, uh, ordinary people that came with to the dealership and they uh, want to put their trust in their uh, uh, dealers. Uh, and then they put out a, a large sheet of paper and they are doing the uh, calculation by hand, you know, by, you know, a, a pencil and, uh, on, the, on the paper. But no matter how they crack it, then they will get it wrong because they will, unless they are trained in economics, and finance, they will do it just like this. But first of all, uh, a simple, uh, uh, one simple reason why this is wrong is, 
Now think about it. In the first year, let's say you paid, you know, 1.4K as interest. But, you know, you're not paying only interest. You also pay partially the principal. So then after the year one, the principal balance would go down. E and even in the second year, if you pay 6% again, the principal balance is different. It's not going to be another 1.44K, right? As years go on, as years go by, principal balance goes down. So eventually, uh, total interest that you pay would be much less than 6K, cannot be 6K. So unless you know how to do this, then you will always be taken for a ride by the uh, you know dealership. Of course, the dealerships cannot cheat with math because these days, you know, there's so many financial calculator apps that you can download on your mobile device and you can easily, you know, uh, find out what is the correct payment or as long as you know what is the rate, uh, you know, <clears throat> what is the interest rate, you know, uh, or they um, actually in the uh, uh, auto industry, they have something called money factor. Money factor is like, you know, uh, uh, I, I, if I understand it correctly, if I remember correctly, uh, uh, it's like uh, 12 hundredth of uh, percent money factor. So money factor times uh, 1,200 is equal to the annual APR, whatever they, but you know, uh, the bottom line is, you know, it's, um, Uh, you gotta know. You gotta know how to do this uh, if you don't want to be, you know. Uh, uh, and if you are buying from a used car <laughs> dealership, most likely you can be, you know, you can be taken for a lie, a ride. So, um, so that uh, our uh, so our next question is then. Um, so you scratch your head. Uh, they said, you know, payment monthly payment is five hundred. And you think, oh, maybe you know, uh, times six, uh, times sixty, that that comes to a thirty k, thirty, three k, three. I mean, six k, um, which is you know, uh, that must be the interest for um, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, five years. And no, uh, so the question is, is this the correct payment? Is this is the correct payment, right? This question will linger around it won't leave you right um, uh, as you drive uh, out of that dealership in a new car right uh, so how do we know uh, there are two ways we can find out one first of all present value of annuity now think about it if this is the correct payment the present value of all of that must be exactly equal to 24K, which is the principal, right? You borrow, isn't it right? The present value of annuity, uh, all of this must be exactly equal to uh, this. So we can, if it is greater than this, then you are being ripped off. You are taken for a ride, right? Of course, it can be like this, but most likely uh, it's not going to be like that. Uh, and most of the times it will be equal. Most of the times it's going to be uh, it will be equal. But you know, uh, by even by some fluke, uh, if it turns out to be like this, then you have you have a lawsuit there, right? You have a good lawsuit uh, there, right? Uh, uh, case for loss. And another way, you can nail, you can exactly nail the correct payment, right? Because as long as you have the formula, uh, you can solve that formula for payment, right? So, um, okay, uh, one of the two ways. We can, uh, one more question. So some people might think, if the present value of all those annuities must be equal, um, If it must be equal to 
the principal of your loan, the principal. What about the interest? I mean, how do I, do, do, uh, how do I, you know, how do they uh, uh, make? Look, you don't have to worry about it because this monthly payment, it consists of part of the principal and part, you know, partially principal, partially interest, right? It's not going to be always in a, a constant proportion, but uh, part of it is principal, part of it is interest. Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> and they are all in the future. So think about it. Um, the present value, uh, if it is principal plus interest, this is like, you know, uh, and this is future cash flow, right? Future cash flow. So uh, in a single cash flow model, we know um, future value is the result of principal times one plus R raised to N. So in other words, um, and then if you s solve this equation for principal, then it's future value discounting, right? Future value uh, over one plus R raised to N. Think about it. It is future values has already uh, future value has already interest for all these years, right? Already embedded in it. So if you discount it to present, it has to be exactly equal to only principal. So that means you know these monthly payments uh, already consist of principal and uh, is comprised of you know. Um, principal and interest. So if you find the present value of all of that, it should be exactly equal to the principal only. Okay, makes sense. Interest is not your concern because they are already getting that interest from the uh, monthly payments, right? So uh, then we can answer these two questions because we already know the formula and uh, actually, doing that example, we're going to uh, do that after the break. It's 7.09, 7.10. So we're going to take a 10-minute break and uh, reconvene at uh, like 7.20 or sometime around 7.20. Okay? All righty. So let's take a 10-minute. Okay?
All right, we're back. We're back. Um, so um, I see like 12 people here. Um, and then in today's forum, last time I checked, there were 14 people except, you know, my uh, myself. So it's like two people are still uh, missing uh, in, uh, in the collaborate. Um, so where was I? So we are now ready to solve that uh, problem. So I said, okay, let's do the uh, car financing problem first, car financing, right? So this is exactly our scenario, right? This is, you know, first, let's find the present. Uh, it, they say five hundred dollars a month. That's the uh, that's the payment, monthly payment. And we need we want to uh, check if it is correct. If it is correct, it should be exactly equal to twenty four k, which is our um, which is our uh, the principal borrowed, right? APR 6%, uh, time five years, but you know, it's monthly, right? Compounding frequency monthly. <clears throat> so we know periodic rate, <clears throat> a monthly rate is, you know, uh, that should be 0.5%, right? And <clears throat> of course, uh, 60 because it's five, M times T, five years times, you know, uh, and there you go, it's gonna give us 60. And let's find the present value. So present value formula is uh, payment over R minus payment over R times one plus R raised to N, and then close parenthesis. Okay. So there you go. Uh, and hit enter. What do you see? It's 25,862, which is, you know, way greater than, which is way greater than uh, what? Uh, our 24K, which is our uh, principal, right? Borrowed. I cannot move this around, so that means. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah, I gotta move. Um, so, um, yes. We're being ripped off, right? We're being ripped off. They are charging us more than. So, if this is the case, uh, of course, you know, what do you do? I said there was a good case for lawsuit, right? Call your lawyer and then, you know, uh, you can settle, uh, you can probably settle out of court um, or settle in the court. Even before the court, you can probably settle out of the court uh, uh, with, you know, a hefty sum of money. They will probably know. Uh, of course, you know, uh, uh, this would be a serious crime if they, but you know, uh, most this won't happen because, as I said, they can't cheat with math. Uh, if there's if this is a glitch due to some glitch of their program, then you know, uh, uh, still they are you know uh, accountable or liable. So uh, uh, there's a case for lawsuit, you know, some. Uh, settlement can be, you know, but, you know, uh, uh, they, they don't, you know, they can't cheat with math because once again, these days, you know, uh, uh, with even the people who are not trained in finance or account, uh, economics can easily download, you know, financial calculator. And with some tip from, uh, you can research how to use the financial calculator, especially time value of money. And easily tell, you know, whether you're getting, you know, duped or not. Um, <clears throat> second, uh, uh, sec second example. 
the lottery, right? This is the lottery example. So if you won uh, the lottery, and uh, remember you have two uh, payout options. One is uh, uh, lump sum cash payout, which is you know uh, uh, sixty. Uh, I mean six million, right? After uh, taking out forty percent as taxes, or otherwise, if you choose annuities, then uh, we should find out what is the present value of annuities and then compare it with the lump sum of six million, right? So <clears throat> again, it's the same thing. Uh, you don't need to do it all over again uh, because uh, you know. Um, uh, the calculation for R and N already done. You know, um, it's the, even if it is the different number, uh, the formula is still the same thing. So I'm gonna drag it down, and then voila. So uh, why do I have two rows for that uh, uh, lottery example? Uh, one. Uh, is the scenario uh, with 6% uh, interest rate. The other one is the scenario with 1% interest rate. And I've been telling you, if the interest rate is uh, high, high, right? Uh, because it is discount rate, right? Uh, the higher the uh, discount rate, the lower, the smaller, the whole fraction, right? And vice versa. Right, so uh, these days uh, the interest rate is more market, uh, you know, prevailing market rate is more like this. So this is more like uh, present day. But if interest rate is six percent, present value of all those annuities is only about three point three three uh, five million, three point three three five million, which is uh, much less than six million. So if that is the case, then you go for the lump sum. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. But if interest rate is like 1%, uh, the present value of all those annuities will come to 6.218 million, which is greater than uh, the lump sum. Then what's your choice? You're, you know, you go for the annuities, right? Uh, does that make sense, everyone? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Good. Good. Question. All right. At least two people are following. <laughs> two people are following. And Wait, I have a question. Yeah, yeah. Um, for that specific example, the lottery example, who's that APR being paid to? Oh, the APR is just, it's not being paid to anyone. It's just the uh, discount rate we use to to discount it to present value. So this is, you can consider that, uh, I mean, otherwise think about it. Uh, it's the prevailing prevailing market rate. So uh, uh, the reason we are using the prevailing interest uh, market rate as the discount rate is uh, if we had, uh, if we had cash today, if we had, you know, um, uh, uh, if we had, you know, uh, whatever, you know, uh, present uh, uh, cash today, um, will it be equal? Uh, think about it. Uh, I receive, I'm going to receive 20K one, one month from now and another 20K two months from now. And then what should it be equal to in today's, uh, today's dollars? And if if I have that, you know, uh, uh, if I have that exact, you know, amount today, and if, if I put it in the bank, uh, with that with that money, with that uh, present value, what is the return I will earn? Most likely today, of course, I will earn, uh, you know, most likely the bank rate. I mean, uh, uh, prevailing market rate, uh, without any risk, right? Because so that's why. Uh, 
that 6% is used as, you know, a prevailing market rate is used as discount rate to find uh, whatever is equivalent to that, you know, annuity payment, uh, right? Uh, so discount rate is basically like opportunity cost, right? Isn't it right? Uh, once again, think of it this way. Um, you have $10,000 and you put it in the bank for one year. If the uh, interest rate is 10%, uh, it will be $11,000 at the end of the year. But, uh, and it goes the same for the future value. For example, you are going to receive, you're going to have, you're going to receive $11,000 a year from now, right? And you know, what, why do we have to, uh, why do we, uh, uh, we, we need to find the present value? Uh, and what do we use for discount rate? Uh, the prevailing market rate, because that is the, uh, uh, if you had that, you know, present value today, uh, that is the opportunity cost that you would have, um, in other words, uh, ultimately, uh, it's the risk-free uh, opportunity cost, right? Um, you could have, if you had this $10,000 today, you could have put it into uh, something else. Something, but that something else is risky. So either the return could be higher than 10% or lower than 10%. But then the alternative is, alternative to that, because it is risky, uh, the alternative to that is to put it in a bank. And if the bank pays 10%, that is risk-free 10%. So it's an opportunity cost. And you always use the opportunity cost as the uh, discount rate, right? Okay, so... Uh, that interest is not okay. That interest is not paid to anybody. It's just the uh, 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 discount rate. Uh, to okay, so where was I? Okay, now um, you see the uh, logic here. Um, uh, when so usually when interest rate prevailing market rate is low and it's been for the last almost you know more than t a decade you know since 2008 the financial crisis for the entire more than a decade interest rate has been held very low uh, and times like this at times like this uh, uh, annuity is a better option than lump sum right times like this uh, and uh, another uh, thing is, you know, why, uh, we, we all understand, you know, if the interest rate is high, that will depress the economy because, you know, borrowing goes down, right? So keeping the uh, rate low, uh, then um, uh, there could be more uh, uh, borrowing and more money supply in the economy, it stimulates the economy. And also it <coughs> stimulates investing in the stock market because nobody will keep their money. Think about it. I wouldn't, for the last uh, decade, I mean, prior to 2008, uh, I had CDs. I put my money in CDs because uh, around, you know, uh, 2005, uh, 2006, I think CDs were paying at least something like 6% in those days. I'm uh, not sure. Uh, but, you know, in my, uh, if I remember correctly, it was something like 6% or, you know or somewhere between three to 6% at least. So I had CDs in those days, but you know, since 2008, I never put my money in CDs because CDs are at best, give, you know, uh, paying like 1%, 1.5%. Uh, there were times, you know, briefly when CDs paid 2%, but you know, if you put it in the stock market, I got better return. Of course, you know, there's a risk. I mean, I lost almost, you know, uh, like uh, 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 like almost 15 to 20 percent of my portfolio uh, uh, earlier this year, but you know I recovered. You know, uh, uh, not all of it, uh, but you know, still you know uh, recovering. Um, but in most cases, you know, uh, uh, stock market uh, in general uh, gave higher return than CDs on average, right? 
So that's what stimulates the economy as well, right? And when interest rates are. So anyway, uh, that's another thing. Um, and the next question is, uh, so how do we nail the exact payment? Um, so we can solve that equation for, uh, where is that? We can solve that equation for payment, right? Uh, so present value of annuity formula is like this, right? And I told you uh, before that uh, this isn't the simplest form. It can be simplified further. I mean, uh, but we still use it like this. It's better to use it like this uh, for a good reason. Why? Because it separates the effect of, you know, uh, change in uh, interest rate, right? Or, you know, change in uh, 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 N, right? Uh, but anyway, um, that we will come back to that later. So uh, since I said it can be uh, uh, simplified further, let's simplify it further. Uh, we can fact, there's a common factor, which is payment over R. So we can factor out the common factor, payment over R. But I'm going to factor out only payment. Okay. There's a good reason for that. I, and you will see. So then this becomes 1 over R, right? And this becomes 1 over R times 1 plus R raised to N. Right? Ah, and then we already, you see already the reason. Now it is already Z equals X times Y structure. Isn't that right? It's already Z equals X times Y structure. And our X is the unknown. We know how to solve, right? We know how to solve for it. But now let's simplify the thing in the bracket, inside the bracket. So inside a bracket, um, we can find a common denominator or a common multiplier. Common multiplier between the two, is the two denominators is this, right? So if you, uh, in other words, you turned it into, you turned it into a, I mean, a, this thing, R became R times one plus R to the N. So you, what does that mean? You have to do the, you have to do the same thing to the uh, numerators, numerator. So then uh, uh, this becomes uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so this becomes one plus r to the n, isn't that right? Because r became this, and r was already there, so. <clears throat> All that was multiplied was 1 plus r to the n. So you do the same to the numerator. For the uh, uh, second term, no change because it was already r times 1 plus r to the n. So the numerator doesn't uh, need to go through any uh, transformation, right? Now we're done. Uh, all we need to do is simply solving this equation for payment, right? Everyone is okay with that because I'm going to have to erase this because uh, so uh, if you want to catch up, you know, uh, I mean, if you want to uh, uh, leave some physical record of this, you know, take a screenshot before I. Uh, so you're okay. I'm going to erase it. Okay. All righty. So now we know it is, you know, um, uh, PVA is like payment times one plus R raised to N minus one over one plus uh, uh, R times A.
r times 1 plus r raised to n. Now, think about it. This is x, this is z, this is y. Just to find x, we know uh, what to do. So, uh, is PVA divided by the thing in the bracket. And we know dividing by <clears throat> something is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal, reciprocal of the, that thing. Right? So, reciprocal of that thing is then PVA times R times 1 plus R raised to N over 1 plus R raised to N minus 1. Okay? All right? You're all good? So then we're going to uh, we're going to uh, use this formula, all right? We're going to use this formula to find n. So um, so here's our example. Um, but this one is about, you know, uh, um, uh, a lottery. I mean, if you won the lottery um, uh, and the, uh, if you take the lump sum, uh, the, it's already 6 million. If it is 6 million, what should be the, you know, um, uh, a monthly uh, payment? I mean, uh, it's not difficult, you know, doing the, uh, uh, but rather than that, uh, you can always do this. You can just drag it down and, you know, uh, it's not a difficult thing. And then just apply the formula there. But uh, more than that, uh, there are so many things that needs to go away. More than that, let's do the let's nail the exact uh, payment in the car financing example, right? So <clears throat> we know <clears throat> uh, the present value of the annuity must be equal to the uh, principal, so the principal uh, borrowed amount, right? Twenty-four k. <clears throat> That's the PVA. If it is the uh, uh, if the payment is correct, right? So then, uh, based on that, we're gonna, of course, you know. Um, apply the formula. This one is 6% over 12. And this one is 5 times 12. Okay. And then applying the formula, which is what? PVA times R times 1 plus R times 1 plus R raised to N divided by, open parenthesis, open another parenthesis for 1 plus R raised to Oh, that, 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 uh, hey, geez. that was an R. R is this one. Okay. Then minus one. Okay. Close parenthesis. Okay. <clears throat> and hit enter. Are you good all the way to that point? Are you good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Only one person. Yeah. Oh, two. Two people only, two people. <laughs> uh, what about the rest of the class? Are you guys following? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, good, good. So let's hit enter. Hit enter. Yeah, the correct payment is 463.99. 463.99. See, that proves that we've been ripped off, right? That proves... Uh, $500. So it's like we are, we've been paying almost like $40 more every month. 
we've been paying almost like uh, $36 or $40 every month. Right? This is another evidence that would be you know, another proof. Now, next, uh, we're going to think about, we're going to look into the amortization schedule. What is an amortization? Uh, amortization is li literally, um, uh, uh, so we, we talked about, you know, uh, 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 the car financing, right? Our payment. Basically, this payment formula is the basis for amortization. Why? What is amortization? Amortization is basically uh, uh, paying down the debt. Uh, so paying down that expression, right? That Id idiomatic expression, paying down. Because if you have if you have a debt, let's say, and we know what is our uh, principal amount, what we owe is 24K. And we can pay it in a single lump sum, or we can pay it over time, right? In installment, right? Installment, monthly payments, installments, monthly installments, spread over time. If you paid, if you paid off, right? In a single lump sum, yeah, we say pay, pay off. But the pay off also means, you know, you've been having a long stream of installments and then you finally paid it off. It can mean that. Um, uh, and then, you know, we have expression, you know, pay up. Uh, it, it, can, it also means, you know, uh, it's done. But then also connotation. I mean, this is, you know, uh, uh, the, the idiomatic expression uh, uh, of, you know, um, uh, the connotation of idiomatic expression. When you say pay up, it can also mean uh, bribing, right? Bribing, right? Pay some hush money, you know? So, oh, so why don't you, you know, oh, he's, you know, um, you are doing something, you know, <laughs> uh, fishy, illegal, or, you know, and then somebody saw you doing that. Uh, and, you know, you have a problem. So then you uh, uh, talk to your partner about it. Oh, well, I was, you know, doing this and he's... Uh, happen to well why don't you just you know uh, pay him up so he would keep quiet right pay up right um, but you know um, forget about that uh, so either you pay off the lump sum or you know full you know in one full you know single payment or you pay down pay down means you know you make partial payment every time right so over the life of this loan, right? This is the terminal time, the maturity, time zero. And uh, at the beginning, the whole principle. At time zero, I had this 24K year. You make monthly payments, right? Monthly payment is like 460 something. But look, that monthly payment of 460. Four sixty nine or whatever, that is not that is not going to reduce the uh, principal by that amount. Why? Because it's not principal, isn't it right? It doesn't reduce the principal, but uh, it breaks down into principal and interest, isn't it right? Partial principal and uh, partial interest. So uh, it's gonna. It's gonna reduce the uh, uh, every every time. It's gonna reduce, right? Your principal uh, by this amount, and this amount changes every time, right? Uh, it is the smallest. It will it will it is the smallest at the beginning, but it will get bigger and bigger, right? The proportion. Uh, uh, and interest is the biggest in early on, and it will get smaller and smaller as time goes by. Okay, so eventually you will see uh, because this is only uh, this is only the uh, uh, showing the principle. It goes down like this. Uh, maybe you know. Um, more like this goes down. Of course, then, you know, T should be here, right? 
Uh, this is cold. This pattern is called uh, uh, decay. Okay, decay will accelerate as time goes on. Think about it. Uh, something dies. You know, uh, you may have. I don't know if you have noticed, but you know, in the in the wild, I mean, you know, uh, I don't think you can easily, you know, uh, encounter a carcass of a dead animal. But you know, uh, 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 in the desert, uh, you can easily, uh, uh, not maybe not easily, in the desert, you can often, you know, run into a uh, a carcass of a, a dead animal because you know uh, it's desert, you know, no water, you know, and you know, some animals might, you know, uh, uh, fall to prey fall prey uh, to some, you know, uh, predator or uh, die of natural cause, but, you know, then the carcass decays, you know, I mean, after death. But as time goes on, a decay is basically decomposition by the uh, micro uh, microbes, right? Um, early on, uh, you, you see, you know, uh, the, the carcass is relatively, you know, in... Uh, Good condition, but as time goes on, the rate of decay accelerates, right? The rate of decay accelerates. But the reason I'm talking about decay, that means something has died. It has something to do with death. And think about it. What does amortization mean? Amortize. This word means death, right? This mort. Rigor mor uh, you know what rigor mortis is? What is rigor mortis? You know, uh, a dead body stiffens, you know, as, you know, uh, 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 and then, you know, uh, uh, mortician, mortal, immortal, mortified. You see. Like uh, you use the word mortified. He was mortified. She was mortified. Right? That's, you know, uh, uh, that's why, you know, this means, uh, then what does it have to do with death? Your, your death decays, in other words, dies, right? Gradually, but it accelerates as time goes on. It accelerates as time goes on, like the decay. Right? So, um, that's what amortization is. Um, and then, so we're going to build amortization schedule because amortization schedule will tell us, uh, it will tell us uh, how the uh, monthly payment uh, breaks down. It should show us, we, we want to know how our monthly payment breaks down. Right uh, into a uh, principal and uh, uh, interest. So to do that, um, so you must have this table all you know, um, you know, uh, with nothing. It must be empty. Is it empty? From here. Yes. Okay, for you. Okay, good. If it is empty, now <clears throat> let's begin. Uh, first, I want to uh, uh, freeze pane. That means, you know, uh, like the window pane, right? If you go to view, uh, there is something called freeze pane. And you, I will select, you know, uh, B29 for that. If you freeze pane. And the reason I do that is because I'm going to move up and down. I'm going to scroll up and down and or, uh, scroll left to right. But, you know, once there is a uh, window pane, as you scroll up and down, you don't lose. You don't lose, right? You don't lose the uh, uh, the label. Uh, and right right to left, you don't lose the, uh, uh, the label in the first column. Now, the first column, you... you you see the payment numbers. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, payment uh, labels. First, there's a payment number, and there is beginning principal balance, payment, interest paid, the principal paid, 
an ending balance, ending principal balance, right? And then a payment number, there will, there will have to be 60, right? Because there are 60 payments. And then it is already filled in, but don't worry. Uh, let's, let's delete it. It's easy. It's easy to uh, uh, fill it in again, so let's delete it. Uh, okay, I'll have to use uh, because this is you know uh, online thing. You know, I have to. Uh, why doesn't it? Okay. Again. Uh, but don't use delete, but clear, because if you delete, it will delete the column. It will delete all the uh, things in the column. Uh, I'll just use, you know, uh, clear content. Here you go. It's all gone. Now, uh, first, you will enter one, two, three, uh, plant a few seed of numbers, plant a few seeds of numbers. Uh, because Excel is Excel is quite smart because it understands your intention. Because if you enter one to three, Excel understands that you want to generate a series of numbers with you know uh, interval of one and consisting of integers only, integers consisting of integers, and you know with uh, 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 interval or space gap of one. So then, uh, then uh, uh, you bring it to the uh, this corner, uh, lower right corner, and then you drag it down. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not so easy here. I'll drag it down. I'm dragging. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why isn't it? Come on. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. oh. Okay, and you drag it down until you see uh, okay, right before that cell that says sum. You see, Excel automatically generates that series, right? Now here, um, uh, I'm gonna fill, uh, first of all, we know what payment is. Payment is already known, so payment is this isn't it right monthly payment is that and you wanna uh i'm gonna lock it because i'm gonna copy and drag it down and if you don't lock it uh it will be a disaster so you're gonna lock it by hitting f4 you hit oh what happened why is it suddenly oh what happened So this is the problem uh, with okay. Um, so I'm gonna point to the monthly payment and how do I, uh, F4. F4 is this. Yeah. Was it control? Or shift? Was it shift? No. Oh. Why isn't it working? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, you gotta remember that. <laughs> this is you know, uh, Chromebook, and I I really hate to use Chromebook. <laughs> I gotta get used to it. Um, Okay, once you lock it, then you can drag it down. Because every month, the payment is always that, right? So, 
Ay, ay, ay. Well, you drag it down all the way. So then it's always, you know, uh, uh, all right, right there. Okay, so you see, this is the total of all the monthly payments, right? So you can tell, oh, the interest is then uh, total, uh, because the principal is 24K, uh, you can tell the interest is only about 3,000 something, right? It's not 6,000. So, um, and then, uh, beginning principal balance. What's the beginning principal balance? At time zero, what is the beginning principal balance? Anyone? At time zero? Hmm? Uh, 6,000. What's that? Was it 6,000? No. 4,000. Who, uh, who said what? Who said? Second person, what did 20, you say? It's 24,000. Yes, who said that? Tanya. Tanya, okay. Yes, Tanya, you're right. Uh, Tanya, you got, uh, you got 0 0.5. Uh, yes. Think about it. Your, your loan uh, is 24K. At, at time zero, at the beginning, you have 24K as your uh, beginning balance, right? So you enter that, okay? And then how much is the, uh, uh, so in the first month, you make this payment, right? Then how much is the interest? In other words, how much, so interest, I told you, payment breaks down into interest and principal. So how much of that is interest? Hmm? We know the interest is, you know, uh, uh, monthly rate is 0.5%. So it's not going to change. So we're going to lock it. We're going to lock it because it's not going to, it's always 24K. Uh, it's always going to be 0.5% uh, every month. And then you're paying 0.5% of what? You're paying 0.5% of what? Hmm? Anyone? Um, You're paying zero. Oh, the beginning balance? Yes. The beginning balance. It's the beginning, yeah, it's the beginning balance. balance. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, um, um, uh, I think uh, at least two people said the same thing, but, you know, uh, uh, only one person. But you know, So, I'm going to give, so one is uh, DeAndre, I guess. And who, who is the second person who... Saura. It's Aura. Okay, it's Aura. Uh, you got 0 0.5. Yeah, I was about to say it too. Okay, and who is this? Uh, Mei Chen. Okay. Uh, Mei Ken. Okay, Mei Chen. But, you know, I don't see <laughs> in the roster. Uh, it's not C-H. I N is Q I N, so don't get me, you know, uh, confused. Um, yeah, it's the uh, yes, of course, it's the uh, beginning balance, right? Uh, you are paying, you are paying interest against the principal, right? So there you go, hit enter, and then what is the uh, principal paid? Hmm? So. Logically, it's not, it's very easy because of this payment, right? Monthly payment, this much is interest. And then principal paid is the difference between the two. Isn't it right? Isn't it right? When I ask these questions, a lot of, most, most of times the students try to answer it in numbers. No, don't, don't, there's no point in answering it in numbers because what matters is the logic, not the num not the number. So uh, you need to give me the logic. And the logic is, logic is obvious. It's the difference between the payment and the interest paid. Isn't that right? Out of this, this interest is paid, then the difference is the principal paid. Then what will be the ending balance? 
What will be the ending balance in the first one? Hmm? No one? It would be the beginning minus payment. Beginning minus payment? No. Beginning minus payment means, you know, beginning balance minus payment is this. No, but this is not principal. Is that beginning minus the percentages? Say it again. The pay percentages they had to do, uh, uh, like like a monthly base. Percentage. Yeah, like the beginning minus the uh, the payment, the monthly payment. No. Your, are you saying monthly payment? This. No, not that one. The the one. Which one? Three hundred forty-six. No. Okay, three hundred. Three point three hundred, what? This one, the one. Forty-three. No. Okay, so you, now then you can say E twenty-nine. Isn't that sorry, right? Sorry, 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 sorry. You can say okay. it's easy. You know, if you say E, the cell reference, that's the easiest way. E twenty-nine. Okay. It's so there you go. Know. Right and uh, yeah, you can say also beginning uh, uh, the uh, um, beginning principal balance minus you know principal paid right. Now, then in the second month at the beginning of the second month, what is the uh, beginning balance in the uh, uh, second month? What's the oh, beginning balance? Same as F twenty nine. Yes, same as F F twenty nine. So okay, so I think Isora answered. The previous question, so I'll give you 0 0.5. May can answer uh, the other question, so um, 0 0.5. So um, yeah, and then uh, we are good to go now. So for example, the rest of uh, so we're gonna uh, you know drag down these three cells first. We're gonna drag down these three cells. Uh, we can drag down this entire row all together, right? Uh, but I have already filled in the column C. I filled in the column C. That's okay. Uh, I can, you know, uh, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, either I drag down only column B and then column D, E, F separately, or I can highlight everything and just drag it down all the way. Okay, and you stop there. Okay, now then, that is a complete uh, amortization schedule. And uh, how do you know if, if this is you know correct? Well, we can tell by looking at the ending balance at the end of the month sixty. Think about it. At the end of the month sixty, you have paid it off completely. Paid it off. So there should be. The ending balance must be zero. Isn't that right? The ending balance is zero. So it checks out. You have paid it off. Another way you can check is uh, once you have already uh, paid uh, paid off all the principal, then sum of all the principal paid, sum of all the principal paid must be exactly equal to 24K. Isn't that right? All these principal paid must add up to 24k, right? Yeah, and I already built in here auto sum in every one of these uh, cells. I built in auto sum already. So from the auto sum, you can tell. Oh, principal paid. Sum of all of that is 24k. That's another proof that you have paid it off. And then you see uh, sum of all the payment is 27,000 something. Then the difference between this payment, uh, sum of all this payment, and the sum of the principal paid must be equal to the principal paid. And it is exactly equal because this is the sum of the interest paid, right? And that's exactly the difference between the two, right? Makes sense? So that that's the proof 
that's the proof uh, that our amortization schedule is complete and impeccable, right? It's exact, accurate, and impeccable, right? All right, so everyone got the same result. Hmm? Everyone got the same result. I'm going to, uh, we're out of time, so we're going to uh, talk more about this tomorrow. Okay. Uh, anyone so have a question? Beginning P yeah. bow is principle specifically, right? Just principle. What? Principle, Beginning what are you talking P about? P balance? Yeah, that's P balance, we have two. Beginning, beginning and end. So, look, literally, that's principle only. Think about it. That's principle only. So, at the beginning of uh, month 60, you had 461 left. Right? And then, during this, in the, in the uh, six, every month you pay this, and then it breaks down into a exactly 231 interest and the principal paid of 461 which is the beginning balance you then by the end of the month you paid it off mm -hmm. right okay yeah, thank you all righty you're welcome all righty so uh that's all the time we have so um if you have any further questions, you know, we're going to, uh, you can ask tomorrow or you can send me an email because we have, um, uh, all righty, we're going to go over this again. Uh, uh, all right, so that, uh, have a great evening. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow, okay? So I'm going to